while our three works are in the show. The Rothko Foundation very generously has loaned us three paintings to put in their place in the Rothko room. I have to say, I was wondering how I was going to feel when, when I saw the, the loaned works arrive at the Phillips and fill the space in a different way. And it was actually so much more satisfying than I could have dreamed because there's no wrong way to go, I think. We still have one painting by Rothko per wall, and we have the benefit of borrowing works that are of the same time period as the ones we had previously. They're called the classic abstractions from Rothko's 1950s period, the, the ones that he's most known for today. When he breaks through to that aspect of the work, it's you know, purely these beautiful color fields and these soft edged rectangular forms. The way that he is inviting us in to, to experience the works in close proximity is still, of course, very much what the new experience is like. And I think that one of the things that I found was a bit different palette um, in, in, in the richness, a sort of a deeper, warmer tone that is sort of predominating in, in my view. The maroon and purple tones that sort of pick up on three these three walls um, in the room opposite that really cool, subtle yellow picture. It's just a really special thing to have a chance to sort of feel the way that these, this particular combination of works um, is, is, is really lighting up the room. Uh, one of the things that makes Rothko's paintings so engaging are um, the subtlety uh, in his painting technique. What looks like sort of solid blocks of color are actually multiple layers of paint. Rothko was secretive about his technique, and that's one of the things that I think has continued to make it uh, pretty exciting for those who are the conservators thinking about understanding his process. And while we do know that primarily you're seeing a lot of oil, there are times there's mixed media. There's a combination of different types of media. Um, and that's, that there's a lot more to study and learn. And I would say that obviously one of the things that is his signature are those beautiful thin layers of paint. Um, one upon the other upon the other. And that's part of why there is such a subtle nuance to those surfaces that all of a sudden, as you really spend the time looking, there's a lot of different shades and gradations that you can see um, shining through. This also makes that sort of soft matte uh, appearance of his pictures also makes them a conservation challenge. If they get scratches and scuffs on them, they're very hard to uh, satisfactorily retouch. Sometimes it's just better to leave the scratches to achieve that very sort of ethereal feeling to his works. I think this speaks to why his technique may feel like that he's creating a flatness. There's an amazing way that it's actually got so much depth to it. And there's so many artists who've been interviewed. One of, one of the wonderful publications on Rothko compiles these interviews with artists who all expressed what they took away and admired in Rothko. And, and they're, again, artists that range from Sugimoto to Bryce Martin to Gerhard Richter, Ellsworth Kelly, you know, many, many, many artists. So there's a long history of seeing Rothko as this incredible father figure in the history of abstract painting. So one, considering him one of the greatest 20th century American abstract painters. <laughs>